So, now we know how to uh, mess with our coordinates on the screen. And you guys are probably at this point going like, Okay, Mr. French guy, that's all good and well, but how does this all tie together? Well, that's what I'm going to show you. So, let's go back to our game panel. And, and remember, again, how we have our game loop, our update, paint, update, paint, whatever. We've been over this a million times. So, basically, we're going to, in our game panel, we have update. Every, however many milliseconds, in this case 50, with Tim, our buddy Tim, he's helping us out. Tim's going off every 50 milliseconds. Every 50 milliseconds, the game is going to update, and then the game is going to paint on the screen. And the only thing update is going to do is update in the main game panel is going to tell all the other objects to update themselves. The game panel doesn't have to worry about how they do it or what kind of things or weird widgets they have. It's just going to tell them to do their own thing and update. So the game manager, or game panel rather, stays as simplified as possible. So, if we were to make our ball object now, which we're not going to because we're not done, and nobody likes half a ball, so, say we had our ball, and ball, ball, equals new ball. Okay. So, the only thing that our main update would do would be ball.update. And that's it. That's all we do. Because we don't want to have our game panel have to remember how a ball is supposed to update and how a player is supposed to update and how the computer is supposed to update and then how the computer's babysitter how her mom is supposed to cook the turkey while it's updating. Like we it doesn't want to worry about all that. So we just tell ball, ball, buddy, you know what you're doing better than I do. So why don't you go ahead Update yourself, I trust you. And that basically all there is to it, so keep things as organized and simple as possible. So that's all the variables we really need at the minute. So we have public void update. Now remember though, um this update method has to be public so that our game panel can call it. Okay. And so basically, remember what I said before? And here we go with the damn window again. You guys are going to hate me. Okay. So let's go through so far how our game is going to work. The game is going to start. Let's see, our ball, where is it? We lost our balls. Oh, there they are. So, we set an initial X position of 250, which is about halfway across the screen, because we set our whole window to 500. So our ball's initial X position is 250 across. And then the initial Y position is 250 down. So the ball when the game starts, it's going to stay right in the middle. That's where it's going to start when the game begins. Now, the way we want it to happen is we want the ball to be moving around on its own. So, remember before how I said we can do that with the velocity that we set? Well, that's what we're going to do. Every update, which is going to be every 50 milliseconds, because that's when ball's update is going to be called, what's going to happen is just quite simply the ball's x position where it is on the screen where its x coordinate is we add to that now let's just do it this way we add to that 
the velocity. And the same thing for for the y direction. God, I suck at typing. Okay. So let's look at what we got. Okay, so so far, Pong is run as our main main class, main method. New Pong, New Pong sets up our window, makes it 500 wide by 500 tall. So that's our core limit. Uh, we can't resize the window. The game ends when we close the window, and we add our game panel. That's that's what happens first thing when we run the program. Next thing we go here. Uh, we'll comment this out. Oh no, we'll leave it there, I guess. We make our ball. Um, constructor for game panel gets called. Well, and we that gets called as we're adding it to the G frame. And let's see. We're calling our buddy Tim. He's like our best friend since kindergarten. We call Tim up, say, Hey Tim, we need a timer. Think you can help us out? So every 50 milliseconds, we're calling our game panel. We're starting the game now. And we're going to start the game by setting our timer. And 50 milliseconds between ticks. And this class is going to listen for the ticks and act on those ticks with action performed. We went over this before. Okay. So, our game is running. And after the very first 50 milliseconds of our game right now, Tim goes, hey buddy, timer went off. Just figured you might want to let you know. So, the timer goes off the first time. Action perform gets called because that's what we specified the timer to do. And right now, nothing happens. Nothing at all. So, what we do is we just call update. This method right here. And all that does is update the ball. Now, I know that's probably a lot of information at once, um, but that's okay. You guys will get it. So our game starts. Ball's in the middle. First things first. Timer goes off. Ball gets updated. And what does the ball's update say? Okay, every time we update, X, our X position, which is currently in the middle, 250, we add our velocity to X, which is negative 10. So, X plus negative 10, or well, 250 rather, plus negative 10 is 240. So the first update, bam, we move over 10 pixels. Next update, bam, we move over 10 pixels. And we also are moving down as well because we're doing the same to the y velocity. And I hope that makes sense. I feel like I'm not explaining it all that well. Um, let's see here. Close you. So let's finally get something on the screen. I feel like you guys have waited long enough. So, like we do with update. We're going to say public void paint and we'll pass along our graphics object that we have as an argument for paint component. So the graphics object is how we're going to do all of our drawing. Our graphics object, G, that we get from the operating system, that we can use 
to do all sorts of things. We can draw images, we can draw circles, we can even draw rectangles. Now that's some pretty high tech stuff right there. But what we want is this is a ball, so balls aren't square, are they? I mean, they might be, but maybe I'm just missing a couple corners here. But we can do G dot fill rect. And fill rect takes four arguments. And all that does, all fill rect does is it creates a colored in box. Um, and we have to specify where we want it. So that's the first two coordinates, where the top left of our rectangle is going to be. Except I don't know why I'm doing that, because I just said, I just got finished saying that we're using an oval, dumbass. So, we got our oval, and it's the same coordinates either way. So we have where we want it to be. Well, if you think about it, our ball is going to be moving around all over the place, so... We can't just say 250, because that's, I mean, that's going to be right in the first, very first second of the game. But after that, who knows where it is? But wait, we do know where it is, because we have X and we have Y. So we can fill in the, what, what spot we want it on the screen with our variables that are are keeping track of our position for us. So we can say x and y for the first two arguments. That's where the top left corner of our oval is going to be. If you want to think of the circle as having a bounding box around it, where the top left corner of our bounding box is. Um, and we want to specify a width and a height uh, for our circle. So it's just going to be a small little circle. 30 by 30, those are pixels obviously, and I need to import graphics to Java dot EWT Okay So I'm going to compile that and hope the computer doesn't explode. Come on. Oh, oh, whew. Still alive. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing we did with uh, update here. We're going to tell the ball to paint itself because how does game panel know what to do with it. It'd be really confusing if we had game panel handle everything for everybody. It's like, dude, I'm not your mom. Do it yourself. And we're going to pass along G, the G that we got, so that ball can do its own draw operations.